Hey, I'm Don with Sienna Coffee Roasters. Today I want to talk with you a little bit about the brewing process, some of the different methods by which coffee may be brewed, and some of the techniques on how to get this uh, to be your tastiest cup of brew. Besides the traditional brew Mr. Coffee type of machine, which most everybody is familiar with, there are a few other methods as well. French press, many people have heard about. Uh, and then there are the varieties called pour over. Chemex, C H E M E X, is a is a brand that's fairly popular as a pour over as well. And then uh, there are even individual pour over options. This one is a Haribo uh, cloth filter. There are advantages and disadvantages to each, and I'll talk about those as well. Besides the traditional uh, of these methods, there's also espresso, which is Frankly, my favorite uh, adds an awful lot of versatility to whatever whatever types of brew that you would like, and I'll go over those in a bit. Um, if I may, <clears throat> the methods are relatively simple in all cases, but what I want to detail for you is that uh, in all of the brew processes, uh, as you may have seen in our video. If not, then take a look at it on our Facebook page, Sienna Coffee Roasters uh, Facebook page. In all of the, in that particular video, I had uh, recounted to you that the actual brew is a function of extracting the oils off of the now roasted and ground beans. Um, how quickly that extracts off is a function of temperature of the water, hotter extracts faster, the size of the of the grind. Coarser uh, will extract slower than finer. Um, and uh, um, the length of time that that's in process. So whatever is your method of brew, if you're not perfectly happy with the, uh, your method of brew, then try to vary one of those variables. With the water, with the water temperature, basically it would be water on boil, and then take it off the burner for about 60 seconds. You want to get it to about 200 degrees, and that becomes an ideal temperature for almost all of these, all of these methods. But one thing that uh, many people aren't aware of is the water you use makes a ton of difference as well. If you use uh, a pitcher zero water or reverse osmosis water or distilled water, coffee requires minerality to do the extraction process. If you use one of those RO or distilled water type methods, then you're not going to be reaching into the bean and drawing out the flavor. So I don't advocate necessarily not doing that, but I do advocate being aware of that so that you can tweak your method. Perhaps you want to leave it longer um, within the brew process. Perhaps you want to uh, make a slightly finer grind. With all of this information, hopefully you'll be able to tweak whatever is your favorite method of brewing the coffee now with the understanding of what it takes to hit that ideal sweet spot of uh, once we've roasted the coffee to its ideal sweet spot, you wanna be able to hit the sweet spot of pulling those flavors now out when, within your home. <clears throat> French press method, I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail with all of these, just kind of hit some overview. The French press method is fairly known to uh, most people. It's one of my favorites too. I like this method as well. In part, if you've seen the video on cupping, the cupping process, one of the advantages for cupping or French press is that the water is poured uh, directly onto the beans, onto the grinds for, uh, for extraction. Give it a stir, wait four minutes, uh, place, the, uh, place the press down to the level of where the water is at, and then when four minutes are up, just slowly, gradually press that down to the bottom and then put the grinds down to the bottom and pour that off. So generally uh, about four minutes with French press, give it a stir, let it sit, and then, uh, and then enjoy. If you pour a couple of cups and you come back later, don't be surprised that the second is a little bit stronger because even though the beans are pressed to the bottom, it's still, it's still brewing for a bit. I tend to pour both cups off at the same time for that purpose. In the case of French press, in fact, that'll be the case of all of these pour over methods, the grind you want to use is a relatively coarse grind. And once again, experiment. Uh, if it's too much extraction, the coffee will begin to take, taste bitter. 
If it's too slow or too little of an extraction, coffee will taste thin. So you want to reach that balance between the two things. Certainly you don't want bitter, certainly you don't want thin. So experiment around a little bit. If you're finding one of those flavor types that you're not a fan of, then adjust your grind size or your time size or, again, the water that you're using. So that would be the, the French press method, a fairly coarse grind about the consistency of uh, kosher salt. And again, in the cupping method, we go into a great deal of detail how professionals will actually sample the flavors of their beans, and you can see a picture of the grind there. The, uh, the Chemex method is another delightful one. I use this one as well. Generally, you wet the filter uh, down on the thing. And on our website, when we finally get this up and operational, we will have for you um, detailed videos and information on how to brew each of these. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you, you uh, wet down the brewer, um, the filter, pour out the excess, and put in whatever amount of beans in all of these cases comes back down again to the general formula of about one to 17, one part coffee to about 17 parts water. So for this, I'll put in, and you can vary that. I tend to prefer one to 16 one part coffee to 16 parts water. It's a little stronger than 17 parts water. And if you like it weaker than that, then you can adjust that formula as well. But uh, 30 grams of water, I wanna say, then yields about 520 um, grams of water. And a good kitchen scale is a handy thing to have for these purposes so that you can measure. Once you get consistent, then uh, it's not quite so important. You get a rough idea for it. Pour in the grounds. Uh, in this case, in fact, I'll, I'll speak of this at the same time, give you the advantages and dis disadvantages. The Haribo, this is a single coffee maker, and in both cases, you'll pour the same relative coarse grounds into both in that ratio, 1 to 17, and then you'll pour only a little bit of water on top for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and you'll see the the grinds start to expand a little bit and they'll give off some delightful flavors, which is worth uh, the sensory experience in this regard as well. This process is called the bloom, where the, the grinds are now in their bloom phase. And after about 30 seconds or so, it basically wets the grinds and gets it prepared for the rest of the process. In the case of the Chemex, uh, it's about three and a half minutes from start to finish. Uh, in the case of the Haribo, about three minutes from start to finish, a little more, a little less. Again, you tweak it as it works for you, but uh, you'll pour a small amount of water to get it to bloom in the first place, and then you'll begin to pour with the kettle, with the pour-over kettle, uh, water in slow amounts in both cases, and let it drip down a little bit, and then uh, fill it up again, and let it drip down, and by that time you're you're at the end of the at the end of the brew. Once again, about uh, three minutes, three and a half minutes. The advantage of the Haribo, besides the fact that you could brew a single cup, and there are other pour other method methods as well, where it is paper filter um, into a cone and into a cup, and you could drink directly from there. And I don't yet have one of those, but uh, um, they're perfectly uh, wonderful methods of brewing as well. In the case of the Haribo, these are cloth filters. There's an advantage to that. Paper begins to remove a bit of the flavor of the brewed coffee. Um, so there are advantages to using, to using this and advantages to using the cloth filter. The disadvantage of the cloth filter is that it's a little more high maintenance. Um, this has to be stored in water in the refrigerator. Um, so it's a little more work to do. In some of our cases, I confess to you, the work is the fun. So, uh, so that's partly why I have these uh, devices that I do and enjoy doing each of those. But uh, tweak those processes. Always, in every case, feel free to feel free to contact us if you want some uh, some techniques, some advice on uh, how you're finding uh, your coffee come out. But I think with this, you'll probably get a good enough idea um, to begin to tweak your own process. In the case of espresso. It's a little bit different in that it's a very fine grind that goes into the portafilter and then uh, tamped down, pretty compressed, 
and then at that point, extracted under, under high pressure from your espresso system. In my case, this is one of my favorite drinks. I like the steamed milk drinks uh, more than the black coffee necessarily, but I'll vary that around as well. In the cases, however, where, where I like simply black coffee, that can be done with an espresso machine as well. It's called Cafe Americano. In all cases where you do the process with espresso, it will generate a uh, shot of espresso coffee. Uh, either you could pour that into the foam milk, or you can drink that directly if you like the espresso, and our beans are tasty enough where that's actually a delicious drink as well. Or one of the options is to pour this into a glass of water with uh, um, with additional boiling water on top or 200 degree just off boil water on top and now you have uh, what is fairly close to a traditional cup of coffee. So espresso is a fairly flexible method of, of doing different drinks. When, uh, when you're done, however, espresso will tend to come with uh, uh, a puck, as it's known, for the, for the fine grinds that are, and when it's done, that gets discarded. In my case, my, uh, my garden is a little bit alkali, so uh, on a soil test, so I throw that into my garden as well. Um, the key to all of this is, once again, understanding the brew process. Coarser uh, extracts slower than fine. Hot water extracts slower than uh, cooler water. Uh, RO water, distilled water, d extracts significantly less slow than uh, tap water or the like, and you vary it around. There's a sweet spot in between those where your brew, we trust, will, uh, will come, to be, come to be perfect. Experiment around, uh, give them a try, and give us some feedback how, uh, how this has uh, worked out for you. We uh, thank all of you for the participation in this show, and uh, thanks so much for uh, allowing us to be a part of it. Give us a call if we can help in any way. Thank you much.